Good morning, I'm Grant Flora, and it's time for the Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. With me this morning is student Zach Bowen and boys head basketball coach John Everingham. This morning, we'll begin by going through Tuesday night's contest at Columbia City. Coach, that was a pretty tight game. As opposed to some of your losses throughout the season, for, by the way, the final score was 67-59. Columbia City came out on top. As opposed to some of your losses this season, you got out to a strong competitive start against the Eagles. How important was that start? Yeah, I think maybe we we should first uh, tell the the listeners out there that uh, you, you, we don't do this live, right? We, uh, so I think it's okay to make make sure everybody's aware of that. Uh, uh, we're actually in school right now uh, recording this show, and, and it's going to air on Saturday morning. And so hope everybody's having a a great break and and uh, a Merry Christmas. Uh, Christmas on Saturday, correct, or Sunday? Which one is it? It's going to be Sunday. 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 <laughs> Sunday. All right. Okay. So we hope that everybody has a great Christmas Eve this evening and a great uh, Christmas tomorrow, spending time with family and, and enjoying the beautiful weather that's probably uh, uh, going to be happening over the weekend. But uh, anyway, I thought maybe get that out of the way that uh, uh, we just make sure that uh, – uh, everybody knows that uh, uh, we hope everybody has a Merry Christmas, you know, over the weekend. Yeah, for sure. So uh, Columbia City, is that what you asked about? Yes, Columbia City is where we're starting tonight. Uh, and I was mentioning your strong competitive start. You know, a couple of your losses earlier this season, uh, you didn't get out to the best start and had to try to come back from a deficit, but it didn't really go that way Tuesday night. Uh, so how important was that start? You know, we've we've we actually had a very good season. You know, so far we we were talking before we got on. Uh, Grant and I were just talking about how exciting some of our games are. And um, you know, I I talked last night. I think we'll get into Columbia City maybe just a little bit in, in a second. But I was talking to our boys last night, um, or should I say earlier this week? You know, at, at Central Noble um, before the game, we were just talking about. Um, there's so many things that we're doing well, and there, there's so many things that are going well. We, we, I really want to mention the exemplary report that we got through the IHSA um, for good sportsmanship, you know. And so our guys are really working hard. Um, they, they have great attitudes in practice. Um, they're good students, and I'm looking forward to the to see the end of semester the honor roll, you know, report to see how many guys we got on the honor roll, which I would expect there's going to be uh, a, a lot of those guys that are on the honor roll. Um, and then, and then the kicker was, I think Monday morning, I got a, an email from, uh, Mr. Brent Doty, Doty, our AD, uh, letting me know that we had an exemplary report from the IHSA. Basically it's an official, uh, Scott Geis that, uh, filled out a report that, that, uh, how, um, how he saw our team, uh, displaying good sportsmanship in one of our games. And so when, when an official notices that it's something that we celebrate. And so a lot of people will look at. You know, every season is kind of the same thing. Every coach, and, and uh, it doesn't matter what level, you know, there's you're judged sometimes by the wins and the losses and things like that. But, you know, high school basketball is so much more than, than just how many games you win and how many games you lose. And uh, certainly we strive and we preach, you know, what it takes to win. But there's a lot more winning that goes on than just the scoreboard at the end of a game. And I think it's important to talk about um, because we're winning in so many areas, you know, our, our locker room is together, our coaching staff is together, and we work hard and we strive to win basketball games and we do a lot of good things. And so um, I've been here uh, through the rebuilding process, you know, early on in my career here where uh, we just weren't a very good basketball team and, and we struggled to win games. Now we were fighting and we were working just as hard as we are right now. Uh, we had great kids then, we have great kids now. Um, uh, but we just weren't very good at basketball. You know, that was the plain and simple truth. And, and uh, uh, a lot of people would talk to me about how hard the, the, the guys are working on the floor and how good of kids they are and how well they're working together. Um, the thing is, this year, we, we've had the same sort of effort and the same sort of things happening, you know, during the games, but not so many, there's not as many people talking about that because we're so close. You know, they, they, they like to talk about more about, what happened on this play and, and maybe the, the suggestions on what to change and offense and defense and stuff like that. But sometimes it gets forgotten that we got great kids out there participating in basketball that are working really, really hard and they're working together too. They care about each other and, and we're striving to win basketball games. So 
I don't know how I got off on that tangent and what question I was supposed to be answering, but I think it's important to mention because, uh, you know, victories come in many different forms when you're a high school basketball coach and when you're a high school basketball team. And we're winning in so many different areas. And, and so one of the difficulties that I have as a coach is, is getting those out there so people can hear about them. You know, and certainly the radio show and, and social media, our, our Facebook page and Twitter account, stuff like that. We try to get that out there as much as possible. The individual stories that we post on individual players. And and uh, um, so I'm just really proud of our guys. And, and we've had a great season so far. Again, we talked before, you know, we came on air here, how exciting our games have been and how individual performances have been um, good across the board with many different players. And so I think overall... We'll get back to that question, whatever it was, and uh, I just thought it would be good to mention that today, you know, about uh, how proud I am of of our basketball team. Yeah, Coach, uh, just great to have the team doing all those great things on and off the court. Uh, And then to begin the week, this week it was against Columbia City, and that was, you know, we had two really tight games this week. Columbia City was one that you couldn't come out on top in. Uh, 67-59 was the final, but it was really competitive throughout the game. Uh, I was back and forth, lots of offense, uh, some really good players on both sides. Uh, it was it was a competitive start, like I said. Um, and you've had some games earlier this season where you've gotten out to an early deficit and had to climb back into it um, and made it close, but it didn't really go that way against Columbia City. You were in it from the beginning, back and forth, you know, close lead changes from the very beginning. How important was that? Yeah, you know, we we've had some games. We we Manchester, I think we were down eleven to nothing or eleven to two, and then Warsaw, we were down twelve to nothing, and we had to fight back. There's there's a little different feel, you know, when you're already behind ten points, and when you get down ten points, it's hard to stay poised and continue to do the things you know will be successful because you want to try to make that ten point shot, which doesn't exist, you know, and so. It was nice to see us at Columbia City jump out and knock down some shots early on. And, and uh, you know, we I'll take you back just a, a few years. Well, quite a few years when I first started here. I think we averaged, averaged uh, I think, 35 points a game. Averaged wow. 35 points a game. And we were really struggling to put the ball in the basket. And this year, uh, for example, you know, the Columbia City game, we scored 34 points in the first half. You know, the first half of basketball – and so we clearly, you know, I've been saying all along that we got guys that, that can put the ball in the hoop consistently. And so we, we've got enough games under our belt now to really say, well, this is normal. You know, there's, there's a new normal with Wawasee basketball, and it's that we have skilled players. We have skilled young players, too, you know, that are going to be around for a while. And so hopefully, you know, that's something that continues. And, and we got off to a good start. We knocked down some shots early. Zebarth came out um, a little more aggressive than we've seen him you know, in past games, and so that was good to see. So overall, offensively, you know, we were running at a clip, and I keep mentioning this, but uh, it, it's something that we continue to keep an eye on, our points per possession. You know, if you have, you know, 30 possessions in a, in a half or 20, um, how many points can you get? Now, normal average is probably 0.9 to 1, um, and, and if you can do that, you can win a lot of basketball games. We're, we're running at Columbia City up near like 1.5 points per possession, which is really, really good. You would expect that in practice, like a varsity team against a JV 1.5. That's how good that is. And so, you know, we did get off to a quick start against uh, Columbia City, and, and that was good to see our guys playing with confidence on the offensive end. Um, one of the issues that I'm sure we'll talk about was Columbia City was just as confident, and they were knocking down just as many, if not more, you know, shots than we were. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned that right there. Columbia City was knocking down those shots. And on the defensive side towards the end of the game, they were stopping you on defense, got some big stops, and went down the other end and scored. But your team always had that fight. I mean, it was right until the end. They were not giving up on the fight. So what can you say about your team's fight overall? Yeah, I think the game was a, it was a one-point game, you know, in the third quarter. Um, and towards the end of the third quarter, it was back and forth the, the whole game. I, I'm, I'm looking at the stat sheet now, but uh, um, I, looking at the lead changes, there's 11 lead changes and seven ties. And so uh, it was back and forth. You know, I don't think I, we might have gotten a five point lead at some point. I remember looking up there and thinking, we gotta, we got, we're up five, but they, they made a couple plays to kind of come back on us. But you know, the big stretch in the game was when uh, we were down one, they had the ball, and they were holding for the last shot of the third quarter. And we jumped into a 1-3-1 one, one zone. It's a little risky, you know, to, to jump in the zone, but our guys got into their spots pretty quickly. 
and we trapped uh, Hedrick up in the top uh, corner of the half court, and he throws an overhand skip pass to a wide open guy in the dead corner, uh, which is the guy we were leaving open. That was by design. Carson Smith ran at him, and I I swear he he got a fingertip on the ball when the kid shot it, and it and it goes through at the buzzer. Then they open up the fourth quarter, and Hedrick comes off a, a screen. We did a nice job of switching that, and we had a hand right in his face, and he knocks that one down. So it goes from a one-point game to a seven-point game just like that. They got two possessions right in a row because of the because of the quarter break. Those are absolute killers. Then we were now we're down seven, and again, it's a little different uh, when the game's going back and forth, and one team you know, jumps ahead by seven, seven points, um, that's a little tougher situation to kind of come back from. But you're right. Our guys didn't – they didn't panic. Uh, we, we, we cut that lead. I think it was maybe six points, you know, heading into the last couple minutes there, and we kept fighting, we kept fighting. But you got to give credit to Columbia City. They hit their free throws 16 for 16 from the free throw line. Are you kidding me, Zach? 16 for 16. I mean, miss a free throw every once in a while, you know, to give us a chance. They did not open a door late in the game. They made all their free throws. We've had other teams – make their free throws. Wes Noble uh, closed out that game making their free throws, and that's what good teams do. So that's that's another sign that we're playing really good basketball teams. All right, Coach. Cam, I believe his last name's Hogue for Columbia City, had 27 points in that game. We talked before the game about uh, Hedrick coming in and putting some pretty good stats up for Columbia City. What were you expecting from Hogue? Was that was that a pretty big performance from him? It was a huge performance for him, but he didn't do anything. I didn't think anything spectacular. I know he had 27 points, and, and it's a career game for him. I, I doubt that he'll ever have a better game than that one, but it all stems from the amount of focus that we were putting on Hedrick. I, I think you got to give that kid – you give both kids a lot of credit, but mostly, you know, the Hedrick kid, he's going to Bethel. He's a, he's a collegiate player, and he's a four-year starter. He was finding the open man. And so um, I, I think, you know, Hedrick only taking eight shots, scoring 21 points, three for four from a three-point line, uh, six for six from the, um, uh, f- from the free throw line, and also five assists. You know, so that's accounting for a lot, a lot of points. So they moved the ball very, very well, much like Warsaw did against us, and, and they found the open man. And, again, you do give credit to Hogue because he knocked down the shots, he made his free throws, um, but he was virtually wide open on some of those shots. But he did knock them down. Yeah, and, you know, I want to mention Maddox's performance a little bit. 27 points, and he was firing on all cylinders, making shots left and right. So what can you say about Maddox's performance in that game? Well, I don't think it was a fluke. I think that's something that he's capable of doing. You know, it didn't feel like 27. I don't know what it felt like to you guys, but it just felt like kind of a quiet 27. He only had one free throw. And it was the fast break where they called an intentional foul on, uh, which was a little bit of a scary play. He kind of flipped around, landed on his back. But, um, you know, scoring 27 points with only one free throw is, is a really big deal um, because you're making a lot of shots. And, and, you know, he only took, and I think the, the other thing that's important, he scored 27 points and 14 shots. And so I think go look at the NBA box scores sometimes and you, you look at some of these guys that are scoring 30 or or what are averaging 30 points, take a look at and see how many shots they're taking too, because that matters. You know, if you're 14 for 28 with 32 points, you still take 28 shots and you score 32 points. Well, Maddox, you know, shot 14 times and, and only one free throw. And that means his effective field goal percentage was through the roof. He was like 80 some percent, you know, but you know, he hit six threes in a game, uh, 27 points. It's very difficult to make six three-pointers in a game because usually after about the first one, two, or three, the other team's going, whoa, wait a minute, we're going to switch this up. We're not going to let him shoot three. So his ability to to cut better, uh, his ability to find a way to get open, and then and then you got to give credit to our other guys too, finding him You know when he's open and when he makes a good cut, delivering that ball uh, on time and where he's, he's in, in his shooting pocket. Um, so there's a lot that goes into, you know, making outside shots, and, and, and it's a team effort. It's a group effort. All right, that concludes our recap of Columbia City. Coming up, we'll discuss the Wednesday night matchup with Central Noble. More Coach's Corner basketball show coming up on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com.
Welcome back to the Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. It's Grant Flora with Zach Bowen and Coach John Everingham, and it's time to discuss our recap of Central Noble. So Central Noble, the final score, 55-47. to Wallace C coming out on top in a really competitive game over at Albion. And so, Coach, to start off, it was a terrific win Wednesday night, and you're able to step up in a lot of different ways throughout the game. On the defensive end, you got some crucial stops when you need them most, and overall did well to hold the Cougars to 47 points. What were we able to do defensively? Well, I thought I thought we did a better job overall, and um, we we had a couple occasions during that game that was some spirited, you know, coaching or some spirited conversations, you know, at the halftime in the locker room. At one point, we we made a couple back to back defensive mistakes and and uh, uh, things that we've been doing, and we snapped out of it somehow, you know. And so I, I think that's about teaching and learning. I think the the coaches are are making a strong attempt to teach, and and the uh, the players are are really interested in learning, you know. And so uh, things that have happened to us in the past games that, that we've dropped these some of these close games, it's like when when things started to turn against us. Uh, I was able to call a timeout and talk to him. Say, hey, remember when, you know, these happened in these other games, and 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 uh, we fell behind six points to, to Columbia City, and uh, I called timeout, and 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 we had went for two steals and got burnt. Uh, we gave up an offensive rebound, I believe, and and things that uh, had hurt us in previous games. We we were able to make some changes uh, individually and our team defense. Uh, to get some big stops, you know, and so that was a team effort, and and so uh, we have some guys that uh, it's not selfish behavior, um, but they think they need a big play in certain moments instead of relying on their teammates to just be a solid, you know, one solid unit, and so when we start to try to do things on our own, it never really works out well for us, and it hasn't this year so far. But in the Central Noble game, we were able to do things as a unit. You know, we were able to help each other. Uh, in order to get some stops, and and we were able to, we had guys boxing out. Um, their guy didn't get the rebound. They didn't get the rebound, but it made it easier for somebody else to go snag a rebound. And so that counts as a rebound for that player that went in there and snagged it, right? But actually, it was two or three other guys that did a good job boxing out their men. Uh, that w- w- the reason we were able to do that. So there's a lot that goes into you know getting stops and and key moments, and and we were able to do that against C- Central Noble. Coach, talking about a team effort in that whole game, and I kind of seen some. This is kind of a question directly to you. Yeah. Um, Colin Zebarth was kind of in foul trouble there towards the end of the game, and I realized you were checking in Mason Shoemaker. Me and Grant were kind of talking about it last night. Was there any strategy with that? Were you checking in Shoemaker to be a little more aggressive on things so Zebarth didn't get that foul and foul out potentially? Well, Mason has shown, actually, that his first uh, appearance in a varsity game was last year against Columbia City where – you know, he was in towards the end of the game, and I I, re- I recall that there was some chatter going on, like why in the world is he put in Mason Shoemaker there? And Mason takes a huge charge on Hetrick um, uh, down at the other end and gave us a chance, gave us a shot to win the game, you know, last year. And so Mason works hard in practice, and, and he's been a really good leader for us and, and certainly has proven on the defensive end he can be an asset. And so, um, yeah, Colin was in foul trouble. He had four fouls to start the – fourth quarter and so I was able to put Colin back in the game because I have some confidence in our bench guys to to defend and handle the ball excuse me and so that was kind of nice you know I I was I had much more confidence in putting Colin back in the game and I thought to myself well worst case scenario it fouls out but I got some other guys back here that I thought could do the job as well and so uh, when we started going offense and defensive substitutions with uh, a shoemaker coming into the game on defense you know it's about you know, making plays down there. And sure enough, you know, he makes a play down there in a very crucial moment. I think we were either tied at 40 to 40 or we were up 43 to 40. We put him in the game for the first time. And I think uh, either a siege or guard down there and, and they had a potentially easy bucket down there and he reaches down by their ankles and steals the ball from him. And that was a huge play for us to get the possession back because if you remember we come to the other end we started controlling the tempo we started controlling the ball on the offensive end just a little bit and uh, Zebarth goes down the lane dishes it off to uh, Felger which was the biggest play in the game but that does not happen unless Shoemaker gets that steal on the other end you know so uh, we had Shoemaker 
uh, Zebarth with the great pass, and then Felger with the with the great finish down there to give us a forty six to forty lead, and that's how you win basketball games. That's what's been happening to us, and now we actually did it to somebody else. And, and again, it's about teaching and learning. And so, I uh, was really proud of our guys stepping up, playing their roles, and doing what they're 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 supposed to be doing, and uh, and and getting big plays down the stretch. Yeah, coach, that really impressed me. I thought what was most impressive about what Shoemaker was able to do was that. He didn't come into the game at all until that moment in the fourth quarter. And to come out in those crucial moments down the stretch and play with that intensity and be able to make those big plays, you know, I, I feel like that's not easy to do. Um, a lot of people might not notice just how hard it is to stay engaged on the bench and then come back in and make those plays. Well, that's why that's why it's called a team, you know, because, you know, you take Mason Shoemaker, for example, and, and you think about the contributions that he has made over the past couple of years in, in defending guys in practice. You know, he plays every possession like it matters because it does. And even has kind of ticked some guys off in practice because they're thinking, why is this – like Rudy, you know, like why is this guy practicing hard all the time? Like I wish I'd just lay off for a second, you know. But some of our best players have been guarded by Mason in practice. You know, Keaton Dukes last year and, you know, Miles and Maddox and Zbarth this year. He's not looking to take a, a play off and guard some guy that maybe isn't quite as good as those three guys. Uh, but he's making those guys better. He's very interested in, in helping others. And th- those are qualities that are, that are going to last a lifetime for him. And so, and certainly it's easy for me to talk about him and his value to our team, but it's a lot more difficult to see it on a stat sheet. You know, it's a lot more difficult to say uh, to a kid nowadays to say, hey, I think you can help this basketball team in practice. And hey, you're not going to play very much, but you're going to be able to help us. And th- there are kids out there nowadays and, that say, nah, that's I'm that's not I'm not interested in doing that. You know, everybody wants to be the leading scorer and everybody wants to get the most minutes. And so it's very refreshing to see a guy like Mason Shoemaker come in and say, Coach, whatever you need, you let me know and I will get it done. You know, and so um, he doesn't play, you know, 30 minutes a game. He plays two or four minutes a game. And whenever his number is called, he's ready to go in and make a play and do the very best that he can. And so um, those are the types of kids you root for. He's been great in our locker room, and he certainly – it was nice to see him get a little pub, you know, in a game where he goes in and makes a play because we can talk about these things. And we can talk about him on the radio. We can talk about him outside of the basketball program. But probably the most important is we talk about it in our locker room. You know, we talk to other players about selfless guys that make make plays for others. You know, they do things for other people. And so – uh, we talk about victories, right? And last night we won on the scoreboard, but we won in a lot of different areas. And and so things that we were able to talk about, you know, in the locker room and on the bus and in you know, back home and things like that, those things are really important. And so, um, again, it was very nice for Mason to go in there and make a play because it, it makes my job a lot easier in terms of teaching. Coach, um, I'd like to say something here. You know, in those close games this year, you've struggled to come out on top and win the games. And we've been talking about that in post games after those games. And you always say, you know, like, hey, we can come out and play. Well, this time you came in and did get that big win over them. You fought to the end. And it's not that you didn't fight to the end, but you were always on the other side. And this time you were on the side where you could control that game. And you did an amazing job of that. So what can you say about that? Yeah, it's what well, we call it winning time, you know, and we, we haven't had a whole lot of possessions this year where we've been in control of our own destiny. Like we have the ball and we are able to control what we're going to do. We did it at Angola. If you remember, we had a possession from three minutes and 30 seconds down to two minutes and 30 seconds where we controlled the ball. Well, they brought in their couple JV guys and they started fouling us and we hit our free throws. We won, right? And so other teams have been doing that to us. And uh, once you get on top, once you, if you're playing a good team and they start controlling the basketball late in the game, um, it makes it difficult because your defense has got you got to think through: Are we going to start trapping? Are we going to start fouling? Like, how are we going to get the ball back? And so, when you start extending your defense a little bit, then it's easier to kind of get better shots at the basket. You know, you get easy layups or you dump it down to a big guy or post, like we did last night. You know, with with Felger, and so we were in our kind of our winning time you know, offense where we were controlling the ball and then bam, we attacked, we got a layup and a foul. And so that's a huge difference when the game's 43 to 40. It's a big difference between having control of the basketball and then getting a layup and a foul. Now it's 46 to 40. That is a huge, huge play. And then they go down, they take a quick shot, we get a rebound. Now we got a six-point lead with the ball and we're doing the same thing. Their only choice last night was to foul. And then 
okay? Now you got to hit your free throws, right? And so we, we go and Felger, uh, Robertson, um, and uh, I think uh, Maddox made your free throws at the end. We're 10 for 11 from the line. So, again, you look at last night's game or uh, uh, Tuesday night's game against Columbia City. They knock down all their free throws at the end. They handle the ball. They get big shots to open players. Well, we were able to get on top of a team, control the ball, hit free throws, and make a, make a big layup. And so – um, that's what we call winning time. And again, we're talking about coaches teaching and players learning, right? So when we got in that situation, we executed, we didn't turn the ball over, and we made a couple plays and then made our free throws. So that's what it's all about. Now, it's getting ahead, right? It's getting in control of that game that's actually hard to do. And so um, that's what we're going to strive to continue to do. Coach, there were a couple of big moments in that game. One of them was at the half. You were down by one. And then obviously you're able to come out and get the eight point win. Another was when you trailed by six in that third quarter, 31 25, and you called timeout. So you went to the locker room at halftime and you went into the huddle at that timeout. What were some points of emphasis in those times that you were able to discuss with the team to get them back on track? T- team basketball. Like, t- stop trying to do it yourself. Like, when we try to play for, when we try to win the game ourselves, like one individual player may try to get a steal or they try to uh, make a, a, a miracle shot, you know, instead of moving the basketball, relying on your teammates, not predetermining like I'm going to score the winning basket, right? It's, it's more like I'm going to move the basketball, and if I get an opportunity, I'm going to make the play. And it may be somebody else's opportunity to make a play. You know, you just got to move the basketball. And, 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 you know, defensively, it's the same thing. You know, do your job, you know, be in help side position, pinch on the penetrations, you know, help V back recover, you know, whatever you want to talk about. We did a better job of playing as a team last night. When we started to drift away from that team concept, that's when I call a timeout and I made sure they were aware that that's exactly what's happening. And so it's to our team's credit that they were like, yeah, you know what? Coach is onto something here. We know what that feeling is like from previous games and we're not going to let it happen tonight. And so I was very proud of our guys to kind of take that. It's a sign that your team is coachable, and it's a sign that your team is understanding what you're trying to teach them. You know, and so it's nice to be rewarded with a victory. Um, but those are things that we've been talking about for the last month. That's going to make us a better basketball team down the road. So we got a chance to execute that. We had pretty balanced scoring too. You know, you look at uh, 16 points, 12 points, 12 points, seven points. Robertson hits a huge three, but it was the defensive end where guys were making plays, you know, big rebounds, um, getting their hands on, on a couple passes, you know, like we mentioned before, the Shoemaker turnover. So I was very proud with the team, the team effort that we had against Central Noble. All right, well, that's going to conclude our Central Noble recap. Coming up, we're going to discuss the upcoming holiday tournament that's going to be on December 30th. More Coach's Corner Basketball Show coming up on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. Welcome back to the Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. It's Grant Flora here with Coach John Everingham. and It's time to discuss the preview of the upcoming holiday tournament. Coach, that holiday tournament is going to feature the host, you know, Wallace Warriors, taking on Trinity Greenlawn in game one. And then uh, you'll play either Woodland or Rochester, I believe, yep. in game two. And that'll either be a consolation game or a championship game in the evening. Um, so you're looking right now at a break until December 30th, which is the holiday tournament. Uh, but what are these next several days going to look like for you leading up to the tournament? That's a, that's a really good question, Grant. Uh, you're good at asking good questions. <laughs> I, I, ha- I will have to give it to you. So you guys do a, a great job. But, um, you know, listen, I, I think uh, I've been around doing this a long time. And, and certainly one thing I think I, that I've learned is that, uh, uh, you know, going hard in practice and, and making sure that uh, – you know, you you instill some values in in your team that uh, that include hard work and sacrifice and and all those different things that you talk about as a coach. But you know, I think when I was a younger coach, I forgot about one factor and I wasn't really good at it until I, I listened to a guy named Bruce Weber, uh, who's been I think at Illinois and Kansas, and he's major D one basketball coach. Um, but I listened to him talk about the word rest. 
and how important that it was to their season when he was coaching at Illinois. And um, I started to really, really think about that. I started to ask some other coaches, you know, like, what is your philosophy on resting and, and how long do you take off over the break? And, and almost to a T, there, there were a lot of veteran, you know, coaches that, were, that I respected a lot that were giving their teams multiple days off and, and um, uh, to kind of rest mentally and physically. And you think, about, um, you think about what you go through in just eight games. I think we played eight games or whatever. But you think about, you know, the, the heartbreak, right, and losing on uh, an overtime or losing a close game. And I can visually, right now as we speak, I can think about the tears that I've seen in our players' eyes and, and how disappointed they were that, you know, they, they didn't quite come out on top. And, you know, the other side of things, that there's, it's also so emotional when you win a basketball game and when you perform well. And we got excited, you know, against Central Noble, and we tried to celebrate as best we could to really enjoy that because it's hard to win. And it makes those wins much sweeter when you, when you go through a little adversity, which we have. But um, mental and physical uh, uh, fatigue starts to set in, and, and you don't want to – just grind these these teenagers right down to the you know to the bone and and not give them any rest and so I think one thing that we're that we've done a good job since I've been here at Wallace C is that we're giving guys rest and and so we're gonna take uh, or we did take you know Wednesday we we uh, uh, played a game against Central Noble Thursday uh, we practiced 30 40 minutes probably at the most had a team meeting and then then it's uh, Friday Saturday Sunday Monday. Uh, that's four days that, that there are no responsibilities in terms of basketball. Obviously, the Christmas falls on Sunday. And so we're really encouraging our guys not to, um, not to play basketball. You know, you know, don't go shoot. You know, you're just getting away, you know, right in the middle of the season. Just get away from things and, and rest, you know. And I think it, it's that mental rest, too, that, that can come down and play a factor late in the season um, that, that will that'll help us. So now, is it going to help us on uh, to have a good practice on Tuesday and Wednesday and maybe Thursday or whatever? Probably not. But we'll get back into shape, you know, quickly. Um, but I do think it's important to go ahead and take a rest, which we are going to do, and have the guys go go and enjoy their families and and Christmas and and however they spend, you know, those days. Uh, hopefully, resting. Yeah, rest is a it's an idea that is big in you know a lot of sports, not just basketball. You know, I run cross country and track, and we have to make sure that we rest whether it be a short day or an easy day, uh, making sure we take easy days easy, hard days hard. Um, but, you know, you're going to get into some pretty big moments throughout this uh, 2023 part of the season, uh, and rest isn't going to be as easy to come by. So yeah. I think, you know, taking the opportunity now to get some of that rest before hitting the ground running in the deep NLC season, some of those tough non-conference matchups, and then eventually the postseason, uh, it's probably a good idea. Well, if this if this broadcasting thing doesn't work out for you, maybe you can go into coaching because it sounds like you got a pretty good grasp, especially with your cross country background. You know, uh, maybe you could talk a little bit more about that because I'm interested to hear that, and maybe some other people are too. But you can't just go out there and run. How how long is a, a normal cross country meet? You so, know, yeah. So I run five in high school. We run five k. 5K, Which how many miles just is over, that? Just over three miles. So you run three miles. It's not like for practice you go out and run three miles every day and you run as as fast as you can. I'm sure there's some court, a sort of uh, a building up to you know performing at your peak, and I, they call it the ladder or uh, I don't know what they call that anyway, but uh, certainly there, there's got to be a strategy in, in the way you practice, how long you practice and how hard you go. And uh, you got any comments on that? Well, yeah. I mean, we have days where we just go out and we run some mileage. It can be long days where we're trying to build up endurance. We have speed workouts that are designed to work on, you know, our speed, and that are going to be harder days. Um, but you're right. We have those days that are designated hard days, designated easy days, yeah. and shorter mileage, longer mileage. So, like, oftentimes we'll run maybe two workouts in a week with easy days in between or, you know, some shorter days. Um, I typically run six to seven days a week, yeah. but on some of those days I'm going shorter and easier, yeah. you know, and it almost feels like a day off because it's yeah, easier. Yeah, exactly. Well, and if I'm not mistaken, West Noble Cross Country has been traditionally very, very strong, correct? Yeah. Um, you guys know what you're doing over there. Yeah, my dad ran for West Noble Cross Country back nice. in the, the 90s, I believe. Um, they had some state teams, I believe. My dad finished on two 
teams that were fifth in the state um, and unclassed cross country. So, uh, yeah, West Noble's had a great program. Uh, it's been fun to be a part of it. Yeah, great. Well, great job, and congratulations on that. And you, so you're you're a senior, correct? Yes. Um, and so your career's over. Are you planning on going anywhere to run or anything like that? Yeah, so actually just a few days ago, I signed with Indiana Wesleyan to go run cross country track. Are you kidding? See yeah. where this is leading <laughs> us right now? This is awesome stuff. <laughs> I want to know more about that. You know, let's go. Let's talk about that. So Indiana Wesley and I did. I went down to the campus down there uh, to talk to their basketball coach and uh, got a chance to kind of see all the the campus and and everything. That is a cool place. Yeah. So my dad ran cross country and track at Indiana Wesley. Oh, nice. Um, and he actually ran for the current coaches that are still there. They're, so they've coached for a long time. Um, and I've taken a couple visits down there, and I know the you know I know them well, and I know the program well. Uh, and I really liked it. It's it's an amazing program. They've taken some runners and done some really big things. I believe they just finished fourth in the NAI Nationals yeah. this season. So uh, they're a really good program. I'm really excited to go down and run for them. When it, when is your signing day? So it was it was just Monday. It was oh jeez um, <laughs> the nineteenth. Yeah, yeah I so. missed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Sorry, I would have went over there and celebrated with you guys. That's that's really cool. And congratulations on on an amazing accomplishment of. Uh, uh, getting to run at the next level, and and that's exciting for you, and and so and besides, I'm sure cross country, it's it's an amazing uh, academic institution uh, with uh, some Christian values and and everything kind of built into there. So, uh, uh, best of luck at Indiana Wesleyan. Thank you. Um, yeah, that was a major part of it as well. Um, but certainly looking forward to some basketball as well. Um, still, some oh, they they got a basketball come. team there too, right? They do that's pretty good. Wesleyan. Yeah. Uh, they, they do a good job and that uh, you what you'll realize when you start going to those collegiate games is how big and how fast the next level is and I don't know if it's the same in cross country or not but uh, in, in terms of their men's basketball team uh, they've been ranked nationally and the, the crossroads league is is extremely tough and those guys are uh, you know 610 611 and uh, fast and strong and can run and jump and and I was fortunate enough to play at that level, and, and sometimes I look at that uh, now, uh, looking at those guys, thinking, how in the world did I ever, you know, do that successfully? So, anyway, <laughs> uh, so I don't know how we're transitioning to whatever we were talking about, but uh, what were we talking about, Grant? So we were starting to look, um, transitioning from, oh, yeah. like, to from these last couple games into the holiday tournament. Um, and so for that holiday tournament, you're going to look, we talked about Woodland and Rochester on the other side of the bracket. Trinity Greenlawn right now is coming in. Um, haven't had a great start to their season, but you're going to be looking to try and get that first game. And then regardless of whether you win or lose, you're going to play Woodland and Rochester. And both of those teams have had solid seasons so far. Uh, and they they both play against a lot of teams that you, know, you guys aren't going to see this year. So it's kind of hard to compare. Uh, but I think either way, you're going to be in for a decent competitive second game um, versus either Woodland or Rochester. So uh, what are you kind of looking at for that tournament, and especially that second game? Well, I think you, <clears throat> the first thing you, you take a look at is uh, Trinity. You know, it's a team that uh, if you're listening on the radio, you probably like, where is that or who are they? You know, there's some, there's some new uh, schools that are popping up in, in bigger cities, and they're, uh, um, uh, you know, they're smaller schools, you know, 1A schools. And, and Trinity Greenlawn is up in South Bend, and they are an IHSA member. And uh, certainly they're, they're involved in the conference with like uh, Lakeland Christian and Argus and Oregon Davis, some of those smaller 1-8, you know, type schools. But um, we, we have to be careful in, in overlooking any team, you know, because when you talk about the state of Indiana and the IHSA and, and teams that are actual high school basketball teams, um, you know, last night Trinity played uh, South Bend Clay and South Bend Clay is a 3A team. They're a big school. Uh, their record is South Bend Clay's record is four and four, and you got Trinity Greenlawn that holds them to 53 points, you know. And so uh, they're they're not uh, somebody that uh, is going to come in. And we're just going to walk all over them. We're going to have to do the same things that we've been talking about in order to beat those guys. Now, yes, they have been struggling, you know, a little bit on the offensive end, and and uh, that's something that you know. Again, we talked earlier in the show about something that we struggled with when I was first here, but. Uh, you know, when you hold a South Bend team clay or a South Bend clay team to 53 points, there's something that you're doing correctly. And so um, we'll be able to catch them on film and, and see some of their games 
Um, they played uh, Culver and Oregon Davis, uh, South Central. You know, they played all those schools. They lost to South Central by two. Um, they lost to Oregon Davis. I'm sorry, they beat Oregon Davis um, and then lost to Culver. And so um, for the most part, they've been playing kind of 1A, 2A type schools. And I've been a coach at a 1A school. And, man, when you get a chance to play that 3A or 4A, there's just something different about proving to – others who you are you know you're the small school and you want a chance to play the bigger schools and so sometimes you got to be really careful playing those smaller schools because they get up for that game and if you don't and because it's just you know it's just a small school you got to be careful you, you don't want to slip up and and have those guys sneak up on you but you know on the other side of the bracket you mentioned rochester and and woodland and those are those are teams that are that are pretty solid rochester came in last year they were rebuilding a little bit i know their coach rob malco uh, from back when I was at Argus, and he's a really good basketball coach. They like to play fast. Um, they had a, a Tippy Valley transfer in Paul Leisure, you know, last year that that's a really good player. Uh, was Tippy Valley's best player that moves over to Rochester, and now is Rochester's best player. Um, but really, the team to kind of keep an eye on is Woodland. And so, um, not to make any predictions or anything, but uh, we know Woodland's going to be uh, tough to beat because last year. Um, we lost to them in overtime in our holiday tournament. And this year they're going to come in and they play one other game, but they're, they're going to come in at about 10, 10, 10 and 1. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. So they're 8 and 1 right now. There's a high likelihood they'll win the next two. So it's right back to the grind. You know, we play all these good teams and, and, uh, um, and, and then, and then we'll, we'll probably most likely meet Woodland in that championship game that's going to be 10 and 1. And so clearly they're going to be a very tough opponent in that championship game. But I, I, I'm not so sure they're better than us. And so it'll be another game that's going to be probably back and forth. Yeah, certainly looking forward to that. It's going to be a fun day of some high school hoops. Um, coming up, we're going to take a look at kind of the season in review so far, kind of break down what's happened and kind of talk about what it means going forward. Uh, we'll be back with more Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. Welcome back to the Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. It's Grant Flora with Coach John Everingham, and it's time to discuss the review of the season so far. We've had eight games of Wawasee basketball. Your record's three and five right now. We've had some really competitive games and played some tough opponents. So uh, to begin, Coach, we're at that point in the season where you get a bit of a break. You're going to get to recharge batteries, get guys healthy, but then you're going to hit the ground running with the holiday tournament and then everything that comes after in 2023. You can almost say that's like the first phase of the season is kind of coming to an end. Uh, can you give us some thoughts on how the season's gone so far? Yeah, well, we had mentioned, you know, earlier in the show just about how many victories we're experiencing. And, and sometimes that's hard to sell to, to teenagers or, or kids. It's hard to sell to a community and, and because everybody wants to win on the scoreboard, including me. And, and so I'm a, one of those extreme competitors, and, and I don't like to lose at cards or, uh, you know, chess or checkers or, or anything. I, I really don't. It drives me insane. But... Um, I also understand that there's more important things in life than, than winning on that scoreboard, um, albeit more, way more fun, you know, as we experience, you know, against Central Noble. But uh, uh, we're experiencing so many victories that it's, it's really hard to kind of advertise all those things. And so um, it, nothing is ever easy, you know. It, it's, it's, it's never going to be easy, and we talked about that in the preseason. We talked about that. You know, after a, a couple losses this year, that that it's not going to be easy, and so, um, you know, we we try to, you know, really talk in our in our locker room and our coaches, you know, to the players about how many good things that we're doing, and and when you got guys that are giving full effort, you got guys that really care about each other, um, it certainly makes makes your job and your life a lot easier inside that locker room because you know. There's a desire to do better. There's a desire to get better, and there's actually a genuine uh, desire to root on somebody else. You know that selflessness um, that we that we kind of preach inside of our locker room. And so, uh, nothing is ever perfect. Um, you know, we have had some bumps along the way, um, but 
that's on the floor and off the floor and and that's normal and that's the things that you know in my 15 or how many ever years i've been coaching 16 um that's normal that's like every year you kind of work through things as a family and and uh that's what we've done this year and and i think when you watch our team play you th- you wouldn't think that anything is going on or anything's wrong is because it's not there's not um, we work through our own issues just like any other family would and uh, we get closer and we come closer and we start working harder together and we start becoming a a better basketball team and a big better stronger family and that's the process you go through in any season whether it be cross country football you know baseball or whatever you know so our basketball team is uh, learning who each other is uh, who who we are, you know, we got a, a new player on our varsity basketball team. We got new guys in new roles, as we talked about in the preseason, and so we're learning about what we can do individually to help our team be better. And so, when you have a group of guys that are interested in doing that, um, that's kind of a fun thing to see. And so, you're starting to see some of that kind of come together. And I think we got a chance to be a pretty strong basketball team if we keep fighting together. And we kind of ignore maybe some of the, the outside noise that, that always goes on in, in, the, in the game of basketball in the state of Indiana. Um, because, um, you know, there are factors out there that, that are sometimes hard to deal with. And, and so you have to deal with those things. You have to talk about those things to kids and, and uh, your coaching staff. And, and you have to be able to deal with those things. And if you can successfully do that, um, again, it can make for a really positive, fun you know, experience for, for young kids to kind of go through. And so we're just in that maybe potentially in that beginning stage of us kind of figuring those things out and kind of coming together as a team. So it's super exciting. I get a chance over break to uh, really analyze some of the things we're doing X's and O's wise. And so, um, um, you know, what's working best for us and, and what's, you know, where there's some areas of improvement and also, you know, uh, uh, what types of things that we need to continue to do you know, to get stronger at. And so uh, that's going to be really exciting to kind of come back after a four-day break and, and kind of get back in the gymnasium and, and start, you know, trying to get better. Yeah, Coach, really throughout these eight games that you've played so far, with the exception of maybe the Warsaw game, you've had a legitimate chance to win all of them. And, you know, you sit at three and five, but it's been competitive and close all the way. You've also played some tough players you know, you look at Manchester's Gavin yeah. Benton, West Noble's Austin Kripe, you look at Jackson Gould of Warsaw, even uh, Hedrick of Columbia City, all those guys. And I feel like you've done a pretty good job at containing some of those guys here in the early season. Yeah, you know, I, I think when you look at, like, Jackson Gould, I I, I remember, you know, uh, congratulations to Austin Kripe, by the way. I saw this on uh, Twitter this week that he became the all-time leading scorer um, and you, do you know him? Are you buddies with him? Yeah, yeah, okay. I've talked to him a lot. And so you may be able to speak more on this than I can, but from what I understand and what I've heard from his coach and also some other school personnel over there, that, he, that he's a really good guy, you know. And so um, you always root for good guys, even though you're, they're competitors or, or whatever. But uh, um, I, uh, congratulations to Austin for becoming the all-time leading scorer at West Noble. And uh, his accomplishments there have been been amazing. I've been able to scout just about – he may not know this, or, or I know some people know this, but I, I think I've watched every possession that he's ever played at West Noble because I scout him so much, and, and I like him a lot as a player. And, and according to what people tell me, he's a pretty special guy too. So um, anyway, congratulations to him. But uh, we got a chance to potentially compete against him one more time before I brag on him too much uh, because uh, uh, I thought we did a pretty good job on him uh, we got him a little frustrated. We got him uh, in foul trouble, and we contained him pretty darn good, I thought, in the West Noble game. The same thing with Benton. If you remember uh, Colin Robertson's uh, defensive effort on him uh, and stopping him, and then, like I said, you know, with Hedrick, uh, he he got loose a little bit, but, man, he's he's pretty good too. And so I just remember specifically looking at and talking to Jackson Gould from Warsaw and Austin Kreit from um, – from West Noble got a chance to share just a brief moment with those two guys. And they look at me like, wow, coach, that was, that was tough. You know, like you did a great job on us. And, and uh, we certainly did not make it easy on those guys to come into, you know, our gymnasium or to go on the road. Uh, we certainly gave it everything that we had. And I think those guys would tell you the same thing is that those guys played me really tough. They did some things 
you know, Connor Siegen, you know, comes in last year and we held him to, you know, I think under 10 points. And so we've, we've traditionally done a really good job on other teams, best players. And, and this year we're off to a pretty good start. Um, it's just kind of some of those role players, you know, like the, the Hope kid from Columbia City who had 27. You know, we need to do a little better job on some of those role players. But, um, but yeah, one co- really cool thing about being at the 3A level that's different than maybe the 1A or 2A level is that we're seeing some of the most outstanding uh, uh, players in our area inside of our gym where we're competing against those players. And so um, that's kind of cool. You get to watch them on film. You get to watch good basketball. We're turning the ball over less than 10 times a game. We're averaging 57 points a game or whatever we are. And we got games that are going back and forth. And so um, we're very excited about Wawasee basketball and and the competition that we're playing. We're not taking it easy. You know, we're not scheduling Sister Mary Applesauce and and whoever else is super simple to go and just, you know, get a bunch of wins piled up. We're playing the best of the best. You know, we go Northwood, Homestead, you know, West Noble – uh, and all these other Manchester and, and Columbia City, and we're going right at it. Say, hey, bring it on, you know. And so we do have a tough schedule. It's going to affect our record at the end of the year. It's not going to look as pretty as maybe some others. Um, but uh, we're very excited where we're headed. Yeah, Coach, and while I have the chance, you're right, I can speak a little bit on Austin Kripe. I know this is a, a what was the That's show, fine. but I can talk That's about fine. Austin Kripe. I know all the things you said were true, and I think the biggest thing about Austin that I can say is uh, he, he wants to win more than anything. Uh, I think his scoring this season has been affected a little bit more. He hasn't scored quite as much as he was averaging maybe last season yeah. at this point. Uh, but, you know, West Noble's winning. They're undefeated. They got a big win last or say Wednesday night against yeah. Prairie Heights. Uh, and and he, is, he, he will do everything he can to win. And he's going to try and lead West Noble to go as far as they can. Um, but, yeah, for Wallace C as well, it's, gonna, it's all about, you know, trying to win as a team. Um, and, and do everything they can to be the best team they can be. I will mention to our listeners out there, if, in case you're a little confused, you know, Grant Flores here with us uh, in the studio, and, and uh, that's part of our CTE program, you know, the Pathways CTE program, the radio, TV, and digital uh, media, you know, class that, that is uh, comprised of five different schools. So you may have a student from Goshen, Fairfield, West Noble, Wawasee, or Columbia City, you know, walking through our doors here to participate in class. So I don't think it's inappropriate at all to talk about, you know, West Noble, Fairfield, or some of our other participating schools and their players and their accomplishments. And so uh, we, we have some really amazing uh, student athletes and, and students that come in and do what you're doing. Um, and so, um, yeah, we, we like to celebrate all good kids. We like to celebrate all good performances. There's no question that if we get a chance to beat Austin Kripe in that sectional, <laughs> that I, I will I will be watching every possession that he, that he's got this year, and and he knows it. Their coach knows it, and we're going to do everything we possibly can to stop that guy. Uh, we haven't been real successful so far, but uh, we're going to give it our best shot. But it's okay to celebrate those guys for sure. Yeah, uh, coach. To start twenty twenty three, you're going to play Northwood and Homestead back to back on the road. And, you know, we've talked about all these great players and great teams that you've played so far, but you're going to take it up yet another notch on that weekend. Northwood is currently ranked number three in 3A. Homestead's ranked number four in 4A. And, Coach, how big have these games been to start the season to prepare you for the juggernaut of that double weekend? Yeah, and you, you can go back to, you know, potentially if we do, but you got to think that that's probably likely is, you know, we're going to go from – um, I know, I'm not. I can check real quick, but um, let's just say when when we get to that point, you know, we got Woodland at ten and one. We got Northwood, probably ten and one or something like that. They've only lost once. You got Homestead that potentially could be undefeated at ten or twelve and zero. So I mean, what more do you want? You know, there's nobody that's going to be accusing us of taking the easy way out. And so um, I think that's important for our guys to know inside of our locker room that. If you want to be good, man, you you gotta you gotta beat the best, and you gotta you gotta compete against the best. And so, um, there's a big picture in mind. You know, we we got two or three years here where we think we got a stretch of uh, a really good basketball that's going to be played. And so far, that's held true. You know, because we played really good basketball, we've been up against really good competition, and we dropped a few close ones. But we're not taking the easy way out. We play more 4A schools than than any team in our sectional. And so you can look it up, chalk it up, mark it down. We're not taking the easy way out. 
you know, we're, we're scheduling the big boys and we're going to go compete against them. And so now we go compete against them and, uh, uh, maybe we'll rethink that, you know, after we're done, you know, competing against them. But I have a good feeling. I've watched Homestead on film and I've watched a lot of Northwood already. Um, we got really good shooters. And so anytime you got good shooters, uh, you, you, you and ball handlers, um, it, you're going to give yourself a chance to compete in some of those games. Yeah, Coach, certainly just looking forward to everything this season has in store. Uh, that section of when, it, when we get there in yeah. uh, what, late February, early March, that area is just going to be uh, a fantastic 3A sectional. You've got number three and number five in 3A yep. between Northwood and West Noble right now that are sitting at the top. But, you know, you guys took West Noble to OT. Yep. You're going to play Northwood coming up. Fairfield's looking strong as well. Lakeland, uh, it's just, yeah, honestly, any of those teams could find a way to yeah, get don't it done. sleep on Lakeland. You know they they they're getting better. They're much improved from last year, and they got a they got a stud in in uh, uh, the Kyle kid. You know, so um, you're right. You know, we we got the sectional coming up, and and um, um, you know, if we start knocking off some people, what happens if we do beat Homestead? You know, yeah, we're gonna that, that's something that everybody across the state is gonna look at and say they're gonna say the word Wawasee. You know, they're gonna who is Wawasee or what is Wawasee, and so. If you want to get on the map, you better you better play good teams. Nobody's gonna, you know, look at us if we played a um, a weaker schedule and say, yeah, well, whatever. They're 17 wins, but they haven't played anybody. If we get up to you know double digit wins and and if we can knock off a team or two that that we're maybe we're not supposed to, that's the thing that kind of puts you on the map and that's that that sort of gets you on the radar and and that's what we're hoping to do. You know, obviously the sectional is going to be extremely difficult. And, uh, you know, somebody's going to have to knock off the big dog in Northwood, and, and certainly Wes Noble is going to have a chance of doing that, and we think we can too. All right. Thanks for coming in, Coach. Um, the Warriors will be back in action, like we talked about, December 30th for the holiday tournament. So definitely come out and get in on some of that action if you can. Um, Zach and I will see you then for the call. That concludes the Coach's Corner Basketball Show this morning on 93.7 FM The Mix and on at 937themix.com. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and stay safe out there at the time of the recording of this show. Uh, storms are supposed to be coming in, so uh, stay safe on the roads. Uh, and again, there will not be a Coach's Corner show December 31st as of right now. So we'll see you 2023. Um, it should be January 7th for that next show. Uh, thank you for listening.